So you saw some awesome videos of Southeast Asia on the internet and decided to buy a plane ticket there. But how are you planning to get from point A to point B in Southeast Asia? While renting a scooter is the fastest, cheapest and the most convenient way of traveling Southeast Asia, it is not for the faint-hearted. It is all about navigating the chaos with confidence. I've been riding all types of motorcycles for more than 10 years and have been traveling around Southeast Asia since 2019. Today I'm gonna share my ultimate guide to riding a scooter in Southeast Asia. For some reason, a lot of people who has never ridden a motorcycle before are coming to Southeast Asia and thinking that they will somehow ride a scooter or they will learn how to ride a scooter along the way. While scooters are the most user-friendly vehicles ever, it doesn't mean that you can just get on it and jump onto your first adventure immediately. You should definitely learn how to ride a scooter in your home country before jumping into pits of hell here. You should be comfortable with riding through narrow spaces, riding between cars, riding on uneven surfaces and have a smooth throttle control. So you learned how to ride a scooter and probably have your driving license as well. That license is only valid in your country. There might be some country specific regulations but most of the time your license alone won't be valid here. What you can do is to apply for an international driving permit. It is a temporary paper document which is valid for one year, two year, three years, something like this. Depends on how much you are willing to pay for it. You can get it from your home country or the country that you are traveling to or of course you can get it online. I don't want to watch for anyone's services so I'm not gonna recommend you a website or anything but this is how I got mine and I had no issues until now. In some countries, the traffic police can be really mean and also corrupt. I highly recommend you to have your documents right because if you run into a corrupt cop, he can just ruin your day. A couple of years ago, in a certain country, on a specific island, the police was pulling over tourists in front of an ATM and if anybody doesn't have international driving permit and also don't have enough cash on them, the police was just saying, hey, there is an ATM here, you know, just go and cash out some. They were working for the convenience of people and this happened to me more than once in a day. Now things are a bit better in that country because it was a bad image for tourism, but still it is better to be precautious. Now I want to talk about safety a bit. I want you to assume that there are absolutely no safety measurements in Southeast Asia. Absolutely zero. Of course, some countries are doing better than the others, like Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore are doing better. And don't get me wrong, I love Southeast Asia. I enjoy being here. But this doesn't change the fact that everything is free for all here. For example, here in this case, if that guy fell the other side, probably his ladder was going to hit us. And because of this, I think the most crucial rule that you should follow is safe following distance. Look at this one for example. If that truck suddenly stops for some reason or if I was following him too closely, that construction iron could pierce through my chest and maybe even kill me. So never forget the safe following distance. I would say riding in Southeast Asia is more like a cultural experience because nobody is really following the rules here. So you have to understand the culture and the behavior of the other people on the road. For example, there are no rules for crossroads. Everybody goes towards the way that they want to go very slowly and they just keep the eye contact with the other drivers. I know you just figure it out with mutual understanding and a bit of an improvisation maybe. Crossroads in Southeast Asia are also designed differently. This is a western type of crossroad and let's say that this car right here wants to turn to the left. Probably that car would follow a wide and curvy line. So it wouldn't follow a very direct line. 
But this is exactly how it works here. There is also a triangle in the middle of the crossroads and when I first saw it, I wasn't sure how am I supposed to turn, should I go around it or I don't know what should I do because turning directly looked very awkward to me. At some point you are literally riding at the opposite lane which is very prone to accidents. Here in this video I'm riding a bicycle in Vietnam. I want to turn to the right and as you can see here there are also vehicles coming from that direction. At some point they are getting on my lane and they are actually literally driving straight at me. So I think this crossroad design is really very prone to accidents and can you also imagine what's gonna happen if I also want to turn to the left. It's a complete mess but this is how it works here and also actually I've never seen an accident. There is also that. I highly recommend you to have an action camera on you all the time. If you make an accident you are gonna have a video of it for the insurance and also if somebody hits you and runs you are gonna have the video of it as well with the plate number of that vehicle which probably you are never gonna remember. Also an action camera can save you from corruption as well. Helmets are not durable items. If you drop it or hit it somewhere, it's gone. You need to buy a new one because you damaged it and it's not gonna protect your head in case of an accident. So with this information, you can imagine the you know, situation with the rental helmets, they are literally treated like watermelons. The helmets in Southeast Asia are more like plastic caps. You can easily bend them with your hands or break them by yourself. So don't expect these helmets to protect your head in case of a real accident. They are mostly worn to avoid being fined by the police. Especially in Vietnam, people are wearing all types of things as a helmet and Actually, there is a very popular type of helmet that women are usually wearing. There is a gap at the behind of the helmet which lets women keep their ponytails, which <laughs> doesn't look really safe, but this is the way here. Now I want to share some statistics with you, which is made by Icon. In case of an accident, the area that most likely gonna get the crash impact is your face. It is highly unlikely that you are gonna hit the top of your head to anywhere. So just keep that in mind when you are wearing an open face helmet. Motorcycle clothes are basically non-existent here. I've never seen anybody wearing a motorcycle jacket. I've never seen anybody selling it. So I also know that it is really very annoying to you know wear all of these things like an astronaut especially when it is this hot outside at least try not to forget that we are very very fragile beings and try to write as responsibly as possible i want to talk about positioning a bit here if you are an inexperienced rider you may feel like riding closer to the side of the road is more comfortable for you because you are gonna ride at your own pace and nobody's gonna disturb you or you know squeeze you from the behind. Well in theory this may sound nice but actually riding closer to the side of the road has its dangers. A parked car can open its door or somebody can jump on the road. In Southeast Asia a lot of people are joining the road without checking it first. This is very common here and you will not have enough time or space to stop or make a maneuver. So riding on the side of the road is definitely a recipe for accident. Also, if you are riding on the side of the road, you are leaving a very large empty area on your lane and probably a car or even a truck will try to fill that gap and they will literally ram you, push you outside of the road. So what I advise you to do is, regardless of your riding ability, is to Position yourself on the middle of your lane. This is the safest way. You will have enough space to go either side or stop or see and predict things. But turning is a different story. As you approach to a turn, you should move towards outside of the road because sometimes you won't be able to see what is after the turn. By moving outside of the road, you will have a wider field of view and you will be able to see what is ahead. 
and also if there is someone coming from the opposite direction that driver will be able to see you as well in this video i'm going back home and i will turn to the right but i keep riding straight until i see what is behind the corner it also rains quite a lot here so it is a good practice to carry a rain jacket with you all the time it is just a passing cloud everything is fine if you see a big lake on the road after the rain try to ride on the side of the road where you can actually see that there is a road because there can be a huge hole inside that lake if the road is totally flooded it is better to just pull over and wait for a local to pass because if there is a hole inside that lake a local probably would know about it it is always a good advice to say that you know follow the locals if you don't have an off-road motorcycle or a scrambler with off-road tires on them try not to ride off-road or on gravel maybe you can ride for a short distance but try not to get on an off-road adventure with your scooter because you may not know the conditions ahead and at some point it might be really hard to go back as well you know it can be downhill and you may just slide and fall rental prices can change depending on where you rent the motorcycle from if you go to a rental place with you know cool decoration and english website professionally managed instagram account you know probably you are gonna pay a double or even a triple price a good price for a small scooter i think is you know three dollars per day and if you wanna rent a bigger scooter i think a good price is like five to seven dollars depending on the also condition of the bike and don't be also afraid of negotiating it's really common here there's nothing wrong with that i recommend you to rent your bike from your host this can be your hotel reception or airbnb host most of the time in southeast asia hosts are renting bikes to their customers it is very common here most probably your host is not gonna ask a deposit from you because you are I know staying in their property if you go to a rental shop as a total stranger of course the renter is gonna ask for a deposit in southeast asia most of the time actually the renters prefer you to leave your passport as a deposit what do you ask for deposit uh, you can give me the passport or id i know i would advise you not to do that because your passport is it is your id and it should be video all the time actually it is not legal i mean this is what I, I don't know human traffickers are doing it you are taking a very big risk by leaving your passport to someone else if that person has bad intentions you know he can you know have a sim card on your name or even open a bank account on your name and do all kinds of criminal activities it is maybe a very long shot but what's the point of taking that risk i see i don't know no point so just don't leave your passport as a deposit and try to find a renter who accepts cash as deposit and also i think this is the legal way of you know doing a business now i'm gonna continue with country specific advices i'm gonna start with sri lanka it is an interesting one because um, in many parts of the world motorcycles are the fastest vehicles on the road because the power to weight ratio is just so high compared to other vehicles on the road but this is not the case in sri lanka in sri lanka the fastest vehicles are the buses Buses in Sri Lanka, as I understand, don't want to stop or even slow down at all, mostly because according to my observation, I'm not sure, but this is what I think, it is because the buses are really, really, really old and if they slow down or, you know, God forbid, stop, it is really very hard for them to re-accelerate again. So they prefer just drive like crazy. They are mostly driving in the middle of both of the lanes and they expect everyone else to step aside. If you see a bus in Sri Lanka, just try to uh, stay away as much as possible. If you are on their way, it is your problem, you know, it is not their problem. Also in Sri Lanka, I will say that the road quality is actually good. There are nice highways, but the uh, quality of the motorcycles are at the 
lower end. Scooters are in Sri Lanka mostly for, you know, daily errands, going to beach or going to restaurant, going back to hotel, you know, stuff like that. So if you want to take a road trip, it's just better to take a train or maybe shared cab or maybe a bus. Indonesia is a popular destination for sure, especially Bali. This is where I'm at right now. Uh, but it is really hard to say anything about Indonesia, I think, because it is an archipelago and all islands are, you know, different than the other. For example, Lombok has really big and good roads, but it is mostly because they are hosting MotoGP events every year. So uh, to be able to host that kind of event, they build very big roads. But this is not the case for the other islands in Indonesia. Road conditions in Bali is not that great. The roads are really narrow here. Two cars cannot fit on the same road side by side. This is one of the reasons why the traffic always gets stuck here. Of course, it is really crowded. I feel like the roads are just not enough for the amount of people on this island. The exhaust systems of the vehicles are not really checked or regulated here literally everyone is using any kind of pipe they want to use as an exhaust i think vietnam is the most chaotic country in southeast asia if you are a vietnamese please don't get angry with me i think if you take a dutch or swiss traffic police and drop him in the middle of ho chi minh probably he would get a heart attack of course, not every city is the same. For example, Da Nang is much more organized than Ho Chi Minh, but also the population is very different. Also, not in every city you have to rent a motorcycle. In Vietnam, it is actually very common to rent a bicycle as well. And in smaller cities, you can go pretty much anywhere that you want to go by a bicycle. Vietnam also has very popular riding routes and passes. If you are planning to do one of those, be sure that you are renting a semi-automatic moped instead of a scooter. Simply because you are not allowed to ride a scooter on some of the roads in Vietnam. The reason for that is some roads are really steep and you need an engine compression to go down that road safely. Philippines, again another archipelago, it was my favorite place to ride a motorcycle, especially ski or definitely check that video on my channel, it is an amazing island. In Philippines mostly the roads are really big and there is literally no traffic. If you go Manila or Cebu City, they are very hectic cities but as a traveler you know you want to discover so i don't think that you are gonna ride anything in cebu city the only thing is that uh, of course the motorcycle options are really limited in philippines i don't think that you can find a nice motorcycle to ride you will be renting you know the lowest end of the scooters thailand has good roads big highways bangkok is a bit crazy but other than that there isn't really much to worry about you can even rent a car and drive comfortably, Phuket, Krabi, you can find good roads. The traffic is not really that crazy when you are out of Bangkok, so yeah, there isn't much to worry about Thailand. Let's wrap it up. So I think this is mostly it. To wrap things up, learn how to ride in your home country and practice there. Have your documents, understand the local culture, keep your safe following distance, have an action camera on you, turn wide, don't ride on the sand, Stay cautious on flooded roads and don't ride off road. I think following these advices will increase your likelihood of staying safe here. If you find this video helpful or at least entertaining, don't forget to like this video and for more videos like this you can subscribe to this channel. If you have things to add or experiences to share with other people, you can write them down in the comment section and see you on the next video.